So we now have the third patch in Baldur's Gate 3, and this one's quite hefty. Um, so I kind of just picked out some of the things I think you would appreciate the most, and that stood out the most for me. So the actual patch notes will be in the description below for you to browse at your own leisure. But without further ado, here we go. By far the most important thing in my opinion about the patch is that we're receiving a magic mirror in our camp. This mirror is gonna allow you to change your appearance whenever you'd like and without any limitations on how often you'd like to do that. There are gonna be some restrictions, but you're gonna be able to change your appearance, voice, pronouns, and your nether region. However, your race, sub race, body type cannot be changed. And rightfully so, I think they're just trying to keep it as thematic and role play like as possible, but it is a full on customization change and that'll be available at your camp when you go there next they're also showing that Baldur's gate 3 is now going to be supported on mac it's, so it's crazy to actually think how big this game is with it slowly starting to trickle into more softwares and platforms as ps5 just got their release as well and now mac has theirs and we're still awaiting the release date for microsoft but we're going to get into that and how much it'll actually cost here in a minute they also address that there's going to be some performance improvements in the lower city and it shows more to come so they're aware that the high dense lower city is definitely causing some serious performance issues and they are working on that as well ps5 controllers will now glow depending on the element of damage that you're taking so pretty cool in the art department they're also going to make dyes more intense and more visible for some specific types of armors they also fixed the fact that Shadowheart was going blonde whenever you tried to equip a hat interesting also i guess face tattoos were disappearing when zooming out of your character i did not notice this at all but that was fixed as well moving into the script and flow changes it's more or less changes to certain dialogue prompts that were triggering either way too easy or just not enough. And they're also fixing an issue where Astarian is discussing topics that are no longer relevant. So very cool and I love that they're just having some fun wordplay here and just having a good time while creating these patch notes. Moving into the gameplay section, which is a really nice quality of life change, I think, um, as using your level up function is now going to level each of your characters who can be leveled. So you're not going to have to click every single portrait all in individually and do it separately it's all going to be in one seamless loop not the biggest change by any means i think it's just a nice functional improvement to the game another important thing that i was stoked to see is for some ui improvements you're now going to have an option in multiplayer to allow you to automatically listen in when another party member enters dialogue in multiplayer so so many times i was just spaced out doing my own thing and my buddies would be in the middle of a cutscene, and i'd end up missing it you now have that option to fix this a side note for anybody playing on PS5, they have been experiencing sudden crashes within their game, but they stated it appears to be more associated with the PSN more than the actual game itself. So if you are having an issue with crashes, just disconnect your PS5 from the internet when you're playing the game. A quick tweet I wanted to cover from Lar at Larian, Polygon reports Microsoft completely misjudged Baldur's Gate 3, and this makes sense on why it's not coming to Xbox until later this year, rather than closer to its initial launch, like the other platform releases. That and the fact that it's actually going to cost Microsoft around $5 million to have this added to Game Pass, which is just mind blowing. I thought that was pretty interesting. And by the way, on a quick side note, if you're interested in how much some of the new games cost to add to Game Pass, check out this table compiled by Microsoft themselves. And going back to that tweet, Sven's response is I would love to meet that analyst. And me and you both, it's just so funny how this game is absolutely massive. And you have an analyst that looks at this game and says, ah, no, this isn't really worth our time. Definitely a bit of a misjudge to say the least but all in all some really good patch notes really quick video just wanted to get it out there for you guys if you enjoyed or learned something hit the like button talk to y'all later